Hi everyone, this is Abrar. Welcome to Abrar Knowledge Channel. Uh, today, uh, there has been a request to me several times that I should summarize all these Lean Six Sigma tools together. So I thought it's a fantastic idea. Let me do this. So I'm going to share one slider to you. So this is the 17 topic uh, we have covered in Lean Six Sigma. And I made a one quick slider, one slider which basically uh, kinds down all these coverage which we have done in my channel so far with respect to Lean Six Sigma. So just start with the first icon, uh, we have Lean. Lean, you know that it's a Japanese methodology, it, uh, you know, it focuses more to avoid this something called Muda. Muda is meaning like waste stages. So the waste stages typically uh, it can generate from the transportations. If you have uh, you know long distance, uh, if you have a supplier which is uh, far from the station and uh, some parts which you can probably get it from the same local suppliers and all that. So anything with the transportations and all that, this is the first uh, kind of waste stages. The second is I, I for inventory. In inventory, again, you have, uh, for example, more than the need if you have it, that is also a waste. And uh, the, the latest uh, concept which you can deploy is a dock to stock. For example, let's say to make a product, to make a, uh, you know, let's say a car, you need uh, 100 materials. And all 100, it comes uh, as a BOM and goes to production and then it ship out. So dock to stock. Uh, that is that can also so basically inventory has an scope uh, to minimize the inventory and control the inventory and then later stage you can think about uh, dock to stock so third one is uh, motion m for motion uh, motion is something like you know uh, it, it says that actually you can have anything in u type you know uh, you can do uh, the the next chain of activity can be uh, next uh, colleague so that uh, he or she can collect your output and can perform it or if you have any doubt or something like that then you can also through access through the front line that is in parallel so in series or parallel you can just check it so that is called u so that you know unnecessary motion in the production that can be avoided even if it is service industry so you can have a parent folder in such a way that actually like uh, so no, number of navigations number of clicks you can avoid it so the uh, fourth form of waste is called waiting. Waiting time is also is called wastages. Then ore processing uh, is ore processing meaning like in that, uh, let me explain briefly about VSM, value stream mapping. In the value stream mapping, it has three coins. One is called value enable. That means customer pays for it, uh, do it at the right time. And, uh, and and then there is a zero defect. So all of these things is value uh, enabled, uh, sorry, value added. Another version you have called the opposite. So opposite version, you have something called uh, non-value added. Non-value added is something which customer doesn't pay for it as anything is crap, rejection, all of these things uh, comes under non-value added. And in between you have a layer called value enable that actually that is a part of part and parcel of uh, regulatory requirement that you cannot do anything. Uh, sometimes you need to go and review the uh, what is the regulatory or statute requirement and then you can see if anything can be converted as an opportunity. So in summary, uh, we have in ore processing, we can name, make one BSM value stream mapping, just kind down value uh, added, uh, anything which is there, which is good to have in the process. Another version is uh, uh, you have non-value added. Non-value added is something like which customer doesn't uh, pay for it and it doesn't uh, need it for converting as a functions. Uh, and then you have anything which is crab rejection and all that. Value enable is something which you have typically uh, in the form of a regulatory or statutory requirement. So you need to put like the current VSM and future VSM and then see which are all the uh, areas which you can do a case and bus. Or uh, we talked about processing, then over production. Let's say beyond that, the invoice quantity for producing it, that is also a uh, direct uh, type of waste stages. The another, next word is self-explanatory defect. 
uh, whether it's a defect or defective, both are wastages. We need to arrest how we need to bring down the cost of poor quality uh, that we need to have a goal. And the last one is yes. Yes is also one type of waste. Unutilized skills that is also a waste. So this is uh, all about lean. And we also talked about case and uh, change for betterment or change for better. So on uh, anything you have an opportunity, uh, you can just focus, uh, uh, you know, and bring that, uh, you know, convert that as opportunity and create the solution. So in summary, lean focuses uh, uh, on uh, eliminating the waste stages and it more of a quality tool you can use it you can use a common sense so this is what the lean is all about the next icon you have is called six sigma uh, six sigma is all about uh, you know statistical analysis uh, we if you say if your process is operating at six sigma that means 3.4 defect per million opportunity uh, 1 million or 10 lakhs you can have uh, 3.4 is a defect so if you go even further 7 8 and all that so it can even uh, lesser than these uh, defects you will have so if you look at uh, 3 sigma uh, in 3 sigma we have uh, 93 percentage is the yield and it will have more uh, defect per million opportunity in the previous uh, you know video there is something called uh, six sigma for dummies i spoke about a very interesting uh, you know uh, statistic between 99 versus 99.999964 okay 99 meaning like in terms of sigma it is 3.8 uh, you know 99.999964 is six sigma so if it is uh, if it is six sigma, let's like say uh, let's say if you deploy this to hospital, uh, you will have a 17 to 34 death associated with the uh, you know hospital one. It can be incorrect, in, incorrect uh, prescription. It can be setup setup failure and so on. So that is one. If you look at the same thing, uh, if 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 the hospital is operating at uh, 3.8 sigma, that means 17,000 we will have a death because of the incorrect uh, incorrect uh, prescription and all that so six sigma is uh, even when you talk about 99 versus 99.99 that is just a matter of two digit 99 it it has a more significance and even if you take aerospace and other thing uh, even six sigma may not be good enough so they need to go for eight sigma and six uh, ten sigma and so on so overview of uh, this this entire uh, six sigma coins down boils down a concept called uh, control the variation why variation because when you have a special variation it can cause uh, an impact it can cause an output to be inconsistent to bring that in uh, uh, consistency we need to arrest the variation and then we talked about overview of uh, dmac approach define measure analyze improve and control so and then we talked about quickly we talked about the different uh, output the project charter that can have a ctqs critical to quality critical to business uh, we can have a timeline we can have a project owner and so on and uh, another one of the videos i talked about grr uh, you know cross method uh, which is uh, for measurement data if you have a measurement data you can use grr cross method we talked about ndc number of distinct characteristic are categories number of distinct categories uh, it should be greater than uh, we, we talked about three conditions uh, if the ndc value determines the whole output if the ndc value is greater than two that is it mean it is a good i mean we can accept that one if it is less than two we need to reject and all that so we talked about grr class method uh, if your data is continuous data so uh, let's say uh, discrete data discrete data is in the form of quality to data pass fail uh, okay not okay all these one we we can use attribute agreement analysis this is also interesting concept where you can compare within, within the appraisers with the appraiser with the standard person or the standard known golden sample you can compare so the nutshell about uh, grr uh, gauge uh, repeatability and reproducibility repeatability meaning like uh, operator uh, doing a task at a different time and up up and re reproducibility means you should produce the same output you should give the same wording 
so that we talked about and i covered two exclusively video on this one please check out you will get more idea about it so process capability uh, is also a core subject uh, in, in lean six sigma uh, cp deals with the customer specification let's say usl minus lsl by six sigma so that what it more of a usl and lsl between this ratio that's called uh, cp cpk uh, it is also like a cp but it takes a process grand average that is called x bar into consideration so you can have minimum of uh, you know usl minus x bar by three sigma or you can take uh, x bar minus uh, you know uh, uh, lower version lsl by three sigma you know, you can take one of any one of these value you can take so we also talked about uh, if it is if you assume that actually like cp and cpk uh, it is same let's say 0.33 that means it operates at one sigma so if it is uh, cp and cpk uh, 0.33 uh, sorry 0.66 that is two sigma if it is 0.99 and 0.99 that is three sigma let's go further so 1.33 it's four sigma 1.66 it is uh, uh, five sigma and two is uh, i mean if it is two cp and cpk equal to two that means is a six sigma as per the automotive standard we need to have 1.66 that is five sigma so that is if the process is cp and cp becomes a center if both the things are center if the process is center what if there is a chances that it is uh, you know the cpk value will be lesser than cp for example cp is 1.2 and cpk when you talk about the process behavior it can be lesser than that like 1 or 0.8 or 0.7 these chances are highly possible in this one so but uh, cpk uh, will not be greater than cp but however it can be uh, you know lesser than cp so uh, when you have that one so if, what it indicated actually the process is not center and we need to see uh, if the cp uh, is lesser than one what it indicate whether the cp or cpk is lesser than one process is not capable process can have more deviations in it then we talked about histograms how that uh, distributions of uh, six sigma has been distributed and then we associate something called bell curve and how many are outliers and how these outliers can be fizzled out and what a special variations we have or how it can be resolved then the whole things the whole uh, six sigma deals with the defect per million opportunity uh, that is something we have like anything you do convert into a million opportunity at six digits for example number of unit failure divided by total number of opportunity and total number of volume we have into 10 to the power of six for example let's say out of uh, uh, 200 quantity fail out of uh, you know let's say 20,000 quantity like you can put like 20 uh, divided by uh, 20 i mean 200 divided by 20,000 into how much opportunities we have let's say ctqs are uh, let's say four each has got four that means 80,000 and then the whole value you can uh, into in the power of six you can apply so in that way we can find it out uh, defect per million opportunities very simple like uh, it is like same like uh, a percentage the only mile difference is in the numerator you need to add the into the uh, uh, into the 10 to the power of six you need to add and then you also need to see that how many opportunities you had uh, also you need to add it so FMA failure mode effect analysis is also a proactive approach where we can uh, bring down the we can build the proactive proactive actions and then control uh, the things before it go uh, you know rejections and all that. Then we we talked about five years or six years start set in order shine standardization sustain and safety and there is something called uh, employee engagement or employee uh, motivation also is being considered. Now it's totally called seven years. So cycle time and process time, cycle time, how much cycle time it takes uh, for a process. Process time include the waiting time and the activity time and all that. So then we talked about uh, uh, Pareto, Pareto also 80-20 principle. So you will uh, focus on the bigger uh, aspect which is contributing for the problem. So this is the quick summary of uh, the entire 17 videos uh, which we covered up uh, in my channel uh, and i just wanted to brief about each thing and i'm looking forward to do some other uh, some other uh, things which i am planning to do arima and so uh, prediction and so on so maybe you can uh, expect another version of video where 
I would also would like to take a few students feedback the student lessons who who keenly follow up and they wanted to give a summary what they learned out of these things and uh, they also I would like to add up on in the upcoming video as well so till then uh, thank you so much for supporting me and uh, and I'm, I'm really getting a very good uh, con I mean very good uh, comments about uh, Six Sigma and I would like to have your continuous support and uh, continuous encouragement to uh, go further thank you so much you have a nice day ahead